the What To Next podcast helps to build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they love for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next great read, then the show. Hi, BK. Welcome to Retro X Podcast. Hi, thank you for having me. So happy to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I write contemporary romance. Um, my first series is the Love Light series. It's three books right now with a fourth coming next year. Um, and it's a small town romance that centers around a Christmas tree farm. I love this. And I was telling you, I was like, I was looking for a, for a Christmas book last season. And then I just finished a small town because it has the Gilmore Girls vibes, it's like perfect fall reads or like fall winter reads, you know, so. So let's talk about like what led you to get started. Like what led you to start writing, you know? Well, I, so I first started, I've been writing for years, both professionally, really not fun stuff like ad copy and social media copy, um, yeah. for real estate firms and for government agencies. Um, but I've been doing, in my free time, I wrote a lot of fan fiction. I will never say which fan fiction because it's divisive. So I'm not going to say it. Um, <laughs> but I decided during the pandemic that I would just try um, writing something original for the first time. Um, so I started with Love Life Farms and it was really, I wanted to create a world and a universe and a place that I felt really comfortable and happy with everything that was going on in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so I started writing Love Light and it was just a happy place for me to disappear to. And I had no expectations in terms of performance or anything like that. It was truly something I did just for myself and then published it. And it's been a whirlwind ever since. Yeah. So let's talk about the process because I feel like you, you're, you're learning both sides. You're become, you became a Hagrid author, but mm -hmm. as a self-published author, what was something you learned that you're like, you didn't expect it to know. And then like, we'll talk about the now being in the, within the publish, you know, publisher. I didn't expect, you really have to do it all and know it all. Yeah. And it's, from everything. It's not just writing the book, it's writing it, then editing it, then formatting it, then the covers, then formatting the covers, then you publish it and then promoting it. It's, you have to be a jack of all trades. And I feel like I learned a lot um, about where my strengths and weaknesses are in terms of marketing the book. But I think what's special about self-pub is that you really have to understand what not, I mean, everybody knows what their book is about, right? But you have to understand what your strengths are in your book and how to market it and how to shape it so that it's social media friendly. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of my success came from platforms like BookTok and Bookstagram, picking it up and sort of rolling with it. Um, so I learned a ton of crazy information that I feel like isn't apl applicable anywhere else, but I really got a stronghold on the publishing process from start to finish. Um, in that way by by self-publishing first yeah and so you're understanding what the market is looking for you know so yeah, absolutely did you was it a happy accident to write for a market or was it just something you just you know kind of like from your background of you know writing copy <laughs> you know <laughs> helps you kind of like that transferable skill that you may have had in your previous life can actually apply for this yeah, certainly. I think I didn't write Love Light Farm specifically for any audience besides myself, but I think when it came to the marketing ability, my day job, which I, I was a creative director for years, so that it, I really had a lot of experience in terms of like how to take that product and shape it for a market. Um, but my, my decision to do self-pub before anything else was I just wanted to see if the story would resonate with anyone and if anyone would even like it. Cause I didn't want to do the whole querying process and traditional publishing, because that can be, that can sort of feel like a dead end. Sometimes mm -hmm. you don't always get feedback. Um, and so I wanted to just do it and see, and I did it and I saw, and it's been, it's been a whirlwind of a year. Yeah. And then now we have publishing, like your, your fourth book is going to come from a traditional publish. So what has been experienced now knowing like, what do you know? And then being like, how different it is from the other side, you know, no one, no one side is better than the other one. I want to preface both sides are just plus and minuses and we're not trying to bash either one. I think both have its merits, but I think it's, it's interesting to see like, you know, 
like now what's the other side looks like you know yeah it's been really interesting I'm sure I'm extremely annoying to everyone on my traditional publishing team because I used to do everything and I'm not used to having a whole team of people help me publish, promote, market my book. It's been, it's great to have a team around me that knows so much about, I'm learning so much more about the traditional public publishing industry, and I'm able to reach so many more readers with the connections. It, it's, it's a whole different ball game in terms of resources, um, and just, it, it feels like a safety net for me so that I don't have to do everything. I can just focus on writing the best story possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's a team of people to help me make it even better. So for me, that feels really comforting in that I can write a story and then I have a team of people that are going to help me make it even better. So it, uh-huh. it felt like a good step for me to grow. Um, and I was really excited about that. All right. So we got to talk about the series and how mm-hmm. it's going to be republish or print edition is going to be re- reprinted into traditional publish stagger from i think june all the way till august i think it is yep, so june, july, to, august. yeah so talk to us about like what each book is all about just kind of like a quick elevator pitch or trope so which ones would you expect Sure. So each book, uh, there's four books in the series and each book is a different season. So Love Light Farms is the first and that's the winter season. Um, Stella and Luca are long, lifelong best friends. Stella enters a contest to save her Christmas tree farm. Um, and she says she has a boyfriend. She doesn't. Luca pretends to be her boyfriend. Um, and that's the gist of that book. And then the second in the series is In the Weeds. Um, it's the spring season book. It centers around Beckett and Evelyn. Uh, Beckett is the head farmer at the Christmas tree farm. And Evelyn is a social media influencer who is a little bit burnt out by her life. Um, and so she comes back to Love White Farms to sort of figure out what her next steps will be. Um, and she reconnects with Beckett. Uh, And then the third in the series is Mixed Signals. It's the summer book. Um, It's between Layla, who is the owner of the bake shop um, on the farm, and Caleb, who is a teacher in the small town where the tree farm is. Mm -hmm. Um, Layla is a little bit unlucky in love, um, and Caleb is as well. So they decide to practice date one another to see what's going wrong. Um, All three of them, I would say, are light, fluffy, happy, feel-good reads. Um, I wrote them to feel good and feel happy. And I hope my readers feel that way too. Yes, <laughs> I can attest that. It's a testimonial. I do feel better. It's like, they're like fun. They're just like a fun little escape. It's kind of like the comforting of like watching some, like a family, just like a, like a town, just to see them like go through grunts and grins and all the fun stuff around it and falling in love, you know? Um, so yes, they're, they're nice and fluffy and just fun. So yeah. Uh, so let's talk about some of your reading life. What kind of books do you tend to read? I tend to read romance heavily. I have to be in a mood not to read romance. Yeah. Usually contemporary romance or I'm in my, I'm calling it my romanticy era where I'm really digging into more fantasy reads, which yeah. young me loved fantasy reads, um, yeah. but I haven't read fantasy in a while. So I'm enjoying getting back into that. So what kind of fantasy have you been reading? I, so I went through the whole A Court of Thorns and Roses series and loved it. Yep. I'm trying to decide if I want to do Crescent City next or Throne of Glass. I've heard Throne of Glass is where I should go. Um, so digging into that fourth wing is another one that just was released today that I've been hearing wonderful things about. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to get that one into. May I suggest Carissa Broadbent um, actually has like a couple series, but they're pretty good they're they're good i think the a chord of the wings of serpents and night is a pretty oh. similar to akatar in that challenging game and enemies to lovers so you're not sure what people's backgrounds it is so um then both books are out so you can actually bench you know the duology um Perfect. yeah <laughs> awesome so do you have any books to recommend our listeners to pick up Sure. So one of my favorite authors and a good friend of mine is Chloe Lease. Mm -hmm. Um, She has a book that came out with Berkeley, I think last year, um, Two Wrongs Make Her Right. Um, It's about what the beautiful thing about Chloe is that she writes uh, her 
motto is that everybody deserves a love story. So she focuses on representation in her love stories. Um, a lot of neurodivergent characters mm-hmm. and she writes her characters with a lot of care and love. So two wrongs make a right. I went on a tangent there <laughs> is about um, t- two people who decide to fake date for revenge. And it's, it's really smart. It's really quick and it's really lovely. She, she's a great storyteller. Um, Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams is another romance that I love to recommend. It actually just came out today. Um, It's about uh, a flower shop owner, Annie, um, who is trying to figure out what's missing in her life. And so she enlists the help of town bad boy, Will, who's a bodyguard for one of her friends. Um, Mm -hmm. And they sort of work together to figure out how she can be more bad. It's really cute. It's really funny. Um, It's really sweet. And I enjoyed it a whole lot. I am listening. Practice my perfect. It's so cute. It's I, so it cute. has it has similar feels. Like if you like your books, you can try Sarah Adams' books. They have the same cozy, small towny feeling, you know. So, um, I, we're actually good pals, Sarah and I, and we joke all the time that we share a brain because we'll be working on our manuscripts at the same time and write something very similar, and we'll be like, well, one of us has to change it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love this. So BK, tell us where you can find you online. You can find me on Instagram at author BK Borson. Um, that's usually where I'm at the most. I'll have a website that's launching soon, bkborson.com. Um, but those are the two main places I'm usually at. You can reach me day or night. That's where I'm at. Awesome. Thank you, BK, for being on the show. Thank you for having me. This has been fun. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For a list of books mentioned and other book recommendations, please visit whatreadnextblog.com. Thank you so much for listening and happy reading.